Hello, my name's Scott. Uh, I'm the Technical Operations Manager for SETSAT. SETSAT have been running for about 20 years now, or which come into our 20th year. Uh, we look after IT, uh, technology and, and security um, for clients all, all across the UK, uh, some outside of the UK, uh, right from one-man bands uh, right up to uh, multinational corporate uh, yeah, enterprises based in, in London and, and Canary Wharf and anything and everything in between. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you today was about Microsoft 365, what the product is, what it does, some of the features that are in there, some of the features you might not know about and, and, and some of the things you're all entitled to if you use it, but also what it is. Um, so we're going to start with the elephant in the room. You notice I called it Microsoft 365 and not Office 365. Uh, it used to be called Office 365 when it was just Office. Uh, Microsoft very recently renamed their product to Microsoft 365 because it does a whole lot more than just Office. Uh, the quickest way for me to show you some of the, the, yeah, the, the jazzy stuff of, of Microsoft 365 is I'm just going to show you a video now, uh, that's the, the, the official Microsoft video, and then I will go into it in a bit more detail, so enjoy. So yeah, Microsoft 365, it's quite a jazzy video they, they show there. Um, I would say, uh, well, the, the main reason I wanted to show that is Microsoft 365 is now a, a pretty jazzy product. I'm a long time Apple fan, uh, obviously I work with Microsoft in the industry and we support both sides. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got a predominantly uh, a, a Microsoft um, suite of, 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 of apps on, on my Mac and on my phone now. Uh, just because they make life much, much easier. So Microsoft 365 in a nutshell is everything, well, imagine everything that you can provide your guys with on-premise servers, uh, all based up into the cloud. So it's the Microsoft suite of packages, it's your emails, it's all the bits and pieces that go with it, all done through a monthly subscription per person that you can dial up and down depending on how many people you have in your business without you having to worry about having uh, things on in the office all of the time, server racks, warranties, renewals, and all, all the other things that go with it. So in Microsoft 365, some of the high level products we've got, obviously emails, that's where it started out. That's where yeah, Office 365 started. So that, that hosts your emails, your calendars, contacts, and, and tasks, what you would know as Outlook. We then have some cloud-based apps, which enable collaboration and communication. So your Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and Teams. 
You also have online storage and databases with one terabyte per user with the right licenses. So that gives you your OneDrive, your SharePoint, and you can use Microsoft Access in the cloud as well. So databases and files. You then get desktop apps for your PC, Mac, and mobile apps. So your mobile apps are included with your cloud apps, but your desktop apps are included with other subscriptions. We'll, we'll talk about those later. And then the way that all separates out is if we just draw our little cloud round here, that runs on the Azure cloud, which is Microsoft's own secure cloud. Uh, and Azure provides all the security and all the extra bits and pieces that you need to make this work. Uh, like we said, it's a monthly cost, and then there's, there's, there's loads more little extra gubbings in there as well. So. 118 million active users as of April last year. Uh, they haven't released the figures this year, but the the, the, the trend is curving quite steep. Um, most of our customers ha are either fully invested into uh, yeah, into 365, or they're in the process of um, they might have moved their mails and they're now moving their files, or they've they might have on-premise emails, but they already use 365 for their office licensing. Um, and it, it, it's something, I can't think of a single customer that we've got now that doesn't have some kind of toe into the 365 infrastructure. And um, when you then look at yeah, what they offer you, it kind of makes sense. It's, it's the way the world is working. So this is my own dashboard for 365. And I wanted to show you some of how that works. Um, if we focus on those core apps, so Outlook, PowerPoint, Excel, and Word, um, I want to show you quickly um, just some of the things you can do uh, and the best way to do that is with a bit of a demo. So this is my screen, you should be able to see me okay. Um, this is me logged into my own Microsoft 365. They call this part Office 365 because this is the Office side of things. Uh, I can go into Azure and Admin and some of the more advanced stuff. But this is this is kind of my dashboard, it shows things where, where people are working and what they're doing. Um, what I wanted to try and get across to you guys this morning is I'm not going to leave my browser. So this is, I'm on a Mac, like I say, this is my web browser, it's called Safari. So if anybody that doesn't use a Mac, uh, Safari is the same as, as Edge or Chrome or, or Firefox. It's just the, yeah, the, the Mac version of a web browser. So I'm going to start off by going into OneDrive, which is where all my files and folders live. Uh, so you can see I work in here all the time. Uh, we're going to a chamber demo folder. Uh, a quick run through of what we've got on here. On the left hand side, these are shared libraries. So this is what we talk about with SharePoint. So think of company drives. So if you work in a company, you might have a finance drive or an admin drive. That's what SharePoint and shared libraries are. That um, So yeah, they're, they're collaborative areas where people can work together. My OneDrive for business is my own personal area. So as in like your home drive. A lot of companies have that saved as like their H drive or their own personal documents. So for this Chamber demo, what I wanted to show you, we've got a couple of uh, yeah, standard Microsoft apps in here. So if we open an Excel document for anyone that's into, yeah, uh, and, and does a lot of finances or bookkeeping and things, or, or, or Excel for yeah, comparisons, this is Microsoft Excel running within a web browser. It's full parity to the desktop app. Uh, I use it in the web browser more than I would ever use it on uh, yeah, uh, as a local app on my Mac. Now, you can do everything and anything you, yeah, you'd better think that you can do. So all your formulas and things are in here. We can change things. We can do all our formatting. It is not a, a cut-down version at all. Um, every, everything you want to better do, you can do in here. Well, the other thing that you can do here that's really cool is this share button up here. If I click this, I can either share this link with someone Anyone, I can share it with anyone within my company uh, and give them access to it. People with existing access, so when we we're talking about SharePoint earlier, if they've already got access to those those um, yeah the, the, those collaborative areas, it's kind of a pointer that points in. And then specific people. So when we say anyone with a link, if I click anyone with a link, just generate a link that I can share with anyone anywhere. I can put a password on there and make it expire and things. Specific people, I can allow editing. Yeah, block downloads and all the security features that you'd want in there. So, um, yeah, if, if, if I wanted to share a file with someone that's just for read only, I'd turn off allow editing. I'd stop them from being able to download it as well. And that way they can only view it in the browser. But when I then press apply here for specific people, it will ask for their email addresses. So if I was to put in one of your email addresses, you'll get an email from 365 saying Scott shared a file with you. It'll ask you um, to click the link. It'll send you a second email with a code in there just to confirm it's definitely you it would then let you in and see that file so that's Excel 
uh, when we look on here, we can do the same with PowerPoint. Uh, while that's loading, let's just quickly open a Word document as well. So we've got all our tabs open across here. So there's our Excel document, we've got a PowerPoint document, and again in here, this is all editable exactly like you'd expect on a, on, yeah, on a full-blown machine. We've got our share button, our comments. If we press present, that PowerPoint will take over my full screen, and I can now do a PowerPoint presentation without even having PowerPoint installed on my machine. Let's just click and it goes through yeah, exactly like we'd, we'd want it to. Um, let's just exit that. Um, Word, yeah, again, exactly the same. We've got our ribbon across the top here. We're in editing mode. We can do all our headers and footers and views. Now, one of the things that you'll notice when you're using this, there is no save button. And the reason being that there is no save button is you don't need to save because you're in the cloud and you're working in the cloud. It's saving every time you type. So it's quite cool uh, on that basis because you, people that work on local apps, we have it sometimes, but they might have been working on an app all day and then they do something that crashes the system and you've got to kind of rely on that auto recovery to bring you back. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, whereas this saves all the time. And also what it will do is if we go up here and go to version history, it keeps a, a, a nested version history down the side here. Um, it's not going to show as much on this one because it's a new document, but what this would do is it would actually show you every time anybody's been in this file. And you can go right back in time, save out different versions, save it as a copy, restore back to that copy. You can add notes to that as well, um, view the changes as well. And that's all built in without having to turn those features on. So it, it, it's a really impressive little suite of, of, of the standard Microsoft apps. The other thing that's on here is if you do have the local app and you want to be able to open the app locally, if you press open in desktop app, which you can do in any of these, when you press open in desktop app, it will open the desktop app that's running on your machine, let you work on it, and when you save it, it'll put it straight back where it found it here, which is in these cloud files. These cloud files you can synchronize locally to your machine if you wanted to. Uh, there's always a sync button uh, inside SharePoint or the top of OneDrive. You'll see up here I've got OneDrive running uh, on my Mac here. Uh, just click on the right one a second, there we go, there's our sets that one, and that's downloaded. So it knows I was doing some work on that Excel file, and it has downloaded that Excel file, just so I've got a local copy here. But again, that's if you don't want to use it, you can do it all from yeah, all from the browser here. So that's, well, we've looked at the, the, yeah, the, the three core apps there. Let's just very quickly have a look at emails as well. So this one's a an interesting one. So let me just log in a second. This be because I had to change my password this morning. Uh, so I have 2FA. This is a good demo of that actually. So 2FA has just popped up a little code on my on my phone. I have to press approve to log in. We'll talk about that in a second. That keeps me nice and safe and stops me from being hacked. Um, so this is emails. Uh, this is Outlook in in the cloud, and this is where Office 365 kind of started. It's one of the things they started doing um, initially, kind of. Uh, uh, um, an evolution from Hotmail or, or Windows Live Mail as, as it's now known. So you've got your folders and things on the side here, we've got our emails, we can create a new message. Uh, so if I want to send an email to myself, I don't need to show you how to use emails and stuff, but yeah, you can do everything in here. Some of our security features, we can yeah, encrypt that email because I've, I've got an E3 license. Um, so I send that off and off it goes. It goes out to our sent items. If I want to move stuff to a folder, everything you can do in normal Outlook, you can do here. Same with calendar. So if we flick over to calendar, this is my calendar. If I wanted to add um, my company calendar, I can go into our directory because we've got a, a shared mailbox called company that's got our company calendar in there. Let's chuck that into my calendars. That will now download and add the company calendar to this 365 account. We can see it downloaded in here. And then that will populate. So again, uh, you can share calendars with each other exactly like you would normally be able to do in the yeah, the full version of Outlook. So let's, let's put all that in there as well. We have online contacts uh, and again shared contacts and all the other bits that go with that as well. Uh, and we can also have tasks, uh, which is, is, is yeah, tasks are quite cool. Uh, if you flag an email, that kind of tags it as a task, and then here you can manage your tasks. There's some other tools on top of that that you can do within 365 as well. So that's a quick whistle-stop tour of like the base apps of Office 365. So if we get back to here, so we're back on our presentation now. So we looked at the core apps and outside of those we've kind of expanded a little bit. We've looked at people, we've looked at calendar, we looked at tasks because they're all part of Outlook. 
Uh, we looked at OneDrive and SharePoint naturally um, because, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're part of what's yeah what what, what makes it all work. They're, they're, they're a file repository. You don't have to use that file repository if you don't want to. You can obviously work on files locally uh, and, and and still use these apps. Uh, it's it's quite clever in the way that works. The one we didn't look at very quickly. Let's just show you this one. Forms. Forms is really cool. Um, we use this quite a lot. If I go into here and create a form for Excel, uh, so the test. So this, what it's going to do, it's going to do two things. It's going to create an Excel file. So we've got an Excel SS file, and it's going to create a form. And it's going to say, right, what do you want to do? So a form is is literally like a survey, a questionnaire, something you you, you want to do. Um, you want to ask some people some things. So we can do choices, rankings. Um, we can do open text ratings. So let's just do a, a, a there's this informative demo. It's going to come up with some suggestions. So let's put a yes in there. Let's put a no and a maybe. It's put these groups in for us. Uh, we can put titles and descriptions in here. We can then view the responses. But what we can do is share this form out with a, a, a copy. So this is people in my organization again, like we saw earlier, or anyone with the link. Uh, we can also share and collaborate, so we can have multiple people working on this form at the same time. The same as we can with PowerPoint, Word, and Excel. When we were saying we could share those files, I could share this Excel file with Chris now, and he could be in the Excel file at the same time as me working in these columns while I'm working in these columns. And it's live, and you, you see it happening. But what this form will do is now we've created a form and we've started putting some test questions in there. If we look back at here and go to this XLS file, You'll notice it's started to build an Excel file and started putting in these questions for me. And if I start filling out the, the, the answers, it fills out this spreadsheet and does the survey for me. And it's automated. It's a really, really cool task. Um, and it's not something I'm just yeah, saying is cool. It's something we use. So if I look, we did a quiz recently. Um, I had to do some data collection for our own culture committee. And we're currently going through our appraisals. Uh, so our entire while we're working from home, We've got questions on here asking about people's performance and how they're getting on. Uh, obviously, I won't show you any of the responses, but this is, is part of our, uh, our pre-appraisal process. We want people to start thinking about what they're doing. And that fills out that spreadsheet for us, and we can, yeah, we can spit off those results, and it, it's kind of automating that for us. So, yeah, there's some pretty cool bits and pieces in there. The other bit that's quite cool is the recycle bin. Uh, so if we tick these items here and go delete, Obviously, on a computer or on my Mac, that would delete and it would put these into the recycle bin down here. In the cloud, we don't get that luxury as easily as that. But what we do get is if I go to here and go to restore my OneDrive. So this works for my personal OneDrive. Uh, we go, what date do I want to restore it, restore it to? So I haven't done any work on here this morning. So let's have a look at yesterday. Have a look, see what it brings up. And it should start having a look, and it goes right. I can see some of the last things I've done since yesterday. These are the two files we were looking at earlier. I can also see that these files have been deleted. So if I just tick those three files, I want to restore those changes. So I want to bring them back. If I press restore, it says, are you sure? It'll sit there, do a little bit of work, and it'll put my OneDrive back to how it was. So you've got that security blanket there for recovering your files. That's, again, baked in. It's there as standard. With SharePoint, it's a little bit more work. You have your admin has to go in and do it. Um, uh, a, a, an individual user can't restore an entire SharePoint because obviously a SharePoint is a collaborative area with lots of people in there. You don't want to be overwriting other people's work. But your OneDrive for business is your own storage space. So yeah, you can restore that and do do as and yeah as and when you need to. So they're the core apps, and, and like I say, it's, it's quite a, an impressive suite of things that we get on there. Some of the other ones that are quite nice are Delve, To Do, Whiteboard, and OneNote. So I'm not going to give you a full demo of those. I, I took some screenshots already. So Delve, uh, some of our stuff is, is blanked out on here, obviously, for data protection. Um, Delve is a very, very quick and easy way of finding what your team and what your, your, yeah, your colleagues are doing. Also, files that get used a lot. You can pinpoint stuff. You can uh, have your favorites. It's kind of like having bookmarks for your documents dialed up to 11. Um, so I can see at any point what people are working on, where they're working on, uh, and how to get there. 
It's a really, really easy thing. We can go in here, we can press search and it'll find a document. It tells you the last person that was on it, what they were doing, you can do it. So all the bits that I was showing you earlier within individual documents, this kind of groups it all together in a way that, that, that you can see your entire estate. The other one that I really like is the whiteboard app. The whiteboard app's been there for a little while. Um, it's really cool while we're working away from home, uh, no, sorry, away from work and we're working at home, but it's quite good in the office environment as well. You open a whiteboard um, and it, it lets you do anything you want to. Uh, you can yeah, you can draw, you can put sticky notes, you can have pictures, diagrams. Um, you can open and install a mobile app. And how it works is when you're creating a, a whiteboard, that link, you can share that link with anybody and you can all be drawing on there at the same time. So it works really well with Zoom. Um, and that's included in any anyone with a cloud subscription. So it's a, a very cool tool. And again, it's live drawing. So if I was to draw on my mobile phone, it appears on, yeah, on the web browser at exactly the same time. The next one's OneNote. I'm not a big user of OneNote. I've got other tools that I do use. But there are some areas where I have to use OneNote. So we uh, manage a lot of our, our ongoing projects and pipeline. Uh, I've got a project team that I work with and OneNote's a really good collaborative area to, to kind of keep those notes and details. OneNote kind of works like a, um, an online file of facts, if you remember file of faxes. Um, you can have all your, yeah, all your different folders, you can have all your different tabs and everything. You can have different security for each area as well. So you can write, you can have multiple books that you share with different people. You can draw, you can diagram, you can copy and paste tables in. It's got handwriting recognition that will convert to text for you. It's got all sorts of, of, of little bells and whistles in there that you can use. And again, that works in the web browser. There are mobile apps. Uh, it works really well on tablets. It works with the Apple Pencil and it, it works well with um, an Android touch recognition as well. It's, it's a very cool tool. Um, and, uh, yeah, OneNote is, is, is baked in again with those cloud licenses. And then when we were talking earlier about uh, your tasks, Microsoft recently bought uh, a, a product called Wonderlist. So Wonderlist uh, was a very, very good, very, very capable to do and task manager app. Uh, what they did was they converted Wonderlist to work in the Office 365 environment. Again, it's available with anyone with a cloud subscription and it lets you um, they download an app on your phone, on your iPad, you can download it on your Mac and your Windows machines, but there's also a cloud-based version. But when they bought it, they managed to bake in this little feature here with flagged emails. Uh, ignore the count on there, this is just a, a demo version. Um, what this will allow you to do is if you flag an email and then you go into the To-Do app, those flagged emails uh, appear and you can very quickly convert a flagged email into uh, a, a task. Um, I have on, on my live one of these lots and lots of different folders of, of, of projects, internal tasks, folders for each of my clients, for people that I'm working on. And I, I simply flag an email and then go in and pull a task through. I can share those uh, task lists with other people within the company and assign tasks to people. It's a very, very cool product. And then the new face for this is Teams. So Teams isn't new. It's been around for a good few years. Um, but it, with what's happened with everyone working from home, Teams has kind of uh, become the forefront of this. Teams is a really, really good uh, entry level and, and GUI, so yeah, graphic interface for your users to be able to find all the stuff I've just shown you. So all the stuff I've just shown you is there. Um, yeah, uh, there are people out there that can sh teach you and, and provide training. It's something that we would quite happily do with any of our customers and, and show you the ways around how to do things and bits that are going to help help your company. Some of that you have to go looking for. Teams, that front end, what it does is, so uh, every team that you create creates a SharePoint area, some files area, collaborative working and, and communications with, with, with your yeah, your workforce. That front end, how it works, you log into the Teams app again on mobile or, or, yeah, or, or within a web browser and it'll only show you what you need because what you've been assigned. So the teams that your members are. You haven't got to go and find those SharePoint folders. You haven't got to go and find your OneDrive. You haven't got to go and find your calendar because it's all baked in. So again, there's a very quick video from Microsoft to show you Teams and they do a much better job than I do. Um, but I'll, yeah, I'll talk a bit more about it after this. Hi there. Welcome to Microsoft Teams, a collaboration app that helps your team stay organized and have conversations all in one place. Let's start with what else? Teams. Here, 
you can see a list of all the teams you're part of. Teams are made up of channels. You can build them by topic, department, or just for fun. Channels are where the real work gets done, where you hold meetings, have team conversations, and share files. At the top of each channel, you'll find tabs. They're like links to your favorite files, apps, and services. Want to have a quick on-the-spot meeting with people in your channel? Select Meet Now. In a meeting, you can show content from your computer or record your meeting. When you share a file in a channel conversation, you and your team can edit it at the same time and share thoughts alongside it. To find all the files that have been shared in a channel, go to the Files tab at the top of the channel. To see all the files ever shared across the team, click Files on the left. Want to talk privately with a person or group? Click New Chat at the top and type their names. Give the chat a name to make it easier to find later. To make a call directly from a chat, click Video Call or Audio Call. In some cases, if your organization has set it up, you can call anyone from Teams using calls, even if they're not using Teams. In Meetings, you can see everything you've got lined up for the day or week. Or schedule a meeting. This calendar syncs with your Outlook calendar. Go to Activity for a view that lets you catch up on all your unread messages, at mentions, replies, and more. And use the command box to search for specific items or people, take quick actions, and launch apps. Convenient, right? And don't forget to download the mobile app so you're in sync when you're on the go. Thanks for watching. Now bring in your team and let the collaboration begin. So yeah, Microsoft Teams has um, really changed the way, uh, yeah, the, the tech landscape for people while they're working away. It's, it's a really good central hub for, for yeah, everything she's shown you there. So some of the bits they haven't shown you. Um, within your teams you have, yeah, she's talked about uh, channels. You can have private channels as well. So uh, a big team could have 30 people in it um, or, or more. Um, but you could then have a private channel that only five members of that big team would be able to access the private channel. And that private channel can have its own tabs. So the tabs yeah, that, that show along the top, you can add websites, spreadsheets, things that you go to a lot. So for example, one of the ones um, uh, I, I work in a lot is our projects. Our projects, we have a project, um, a, a scope. Um, and we do that, it's like a Gantt chart done in, in, in Excel. Uh, we have our finances and forecasts. Uh, we have our pipeline of projects and how that works is if I go into my projects team all of those tabs are already open across the top of teams so I don't even have to go looking for the documents to the point that realistically unless I went looking now and you gave me five ten minutes I couldn't really tell you where those documents are saved because I don't need to um, because I, I don't have to go looking for them they're just there for me it's part of my workflow if I'm doing work on projects I click on the projects team and everything is presented that I need to work on um, so yeah, she mentioned very quickly as well mobile apps. I this is my own phone. Uh, like I'm saying, I, I, I'm not making things up. I've got Microsoft apps all over my phone. I use an iPhone, but yeah, when you look on here, there's anything and everything. I've even got the Edge browser installed on there uh, for bookmark sync and things. Um, some of the apps that are really good on here, obviously we've already spoken about today. The Outlook app in particular, I would say is a better mail app than uh, the standard built-in mail app on, on most phones. And again, Microsoft did the same as what they did with To-Do. There was someone else that made a very, very good mail app um, that worked really, really well and better than, than, than Outlook's own offering. So Microsoft went and purchased that. And they're now, um, yeah, it's probably one of the best apps on mobile. Uh, but they're also bringing the stuff that they learned from that app into their desktop applications now as well. You'll notice on there as well, Authenticator, when I had my 2FA pop up earlier, my app, used, yeah, Authenticator is what allows me into my Office 365 account. So the plans for Microsoft 365. Um, I've noted on here what they used to be called. Uh, so, just to draw your attention to that one quickly, people that had Office 365 Business Premium, when they renamed to Microsoft 365, that's now called Business Standard, 
they haven't dialed down services at all. You don't get less than what you used to. You don't pay more than you used to pay. It's the same price. They've just named it, yeah, named it differently. So essentials became basic, premium was standard, and just business became premium. I don't know why they did it. It's caused some confusion. I don't remember it every day. We have to use a cue sheet. Um, it will become the norm at some point. So the, the Microsoft packages so basic will give you just the online tools so you get your exchange team sharepoint onedrive so for all your online collaboration stuff and the online versions of apps which i've just shown you today business standard or what used to be business premium gives you all of that and then you get your desktop apps as well so your desktop apps are apps that you can install on your pc or your mac with the cloud apps you can install the mobile apps so when i was showing you microsoft office app you get that included with your uh, with the cloud apps and you're allowed to install that on up to five devices same with office here the desktop apps you can install on up to five devices that are using your account business premium gives you the extra advanced parts and this is where we start looking into enterprise level um, i'll come back to that in a second Office, yeah, the Office 365 apps or Business 365 apps, yeah, Microsoft 365 apps, they call them here, are just the desktop apps. So this would be for a company that has their own on-site exchange or they might have hosted emails somewhere else or dare say it, they might have Google emails. With that, that will give you the local apps only and it gives you a OneDrive personal area, but you don't get the SharePoint and the collaboration side of things that you would. That is just for companies that need, need Microsoft apps installed on their machines. But I think you'll agree from what I've shown you earlier, it's time to start questioning, do you need those local apps when you can do it all from the cloud anyway? And then to sandwich these, there is a, um, there's some a very, very basic licenses above this, which are called Exchange Online only. So Exchange Online Plan 1 will give you a 50 gig mailbox, and that's all you get, just Exchange. Uh, it's very cheap, it's around about £3, and that just gives you uh, yeah, an email account. And then above this, we have Exchange Plans, uh, sorry, uh, Enterprise Plans. The Enterprise Plans are what you uh, e1 is uh with, yeah, without the desktop apps e3 gives you the desktop apps and then e5 brings in um yeah even more but with your uh enterprise level stuff you start getting some of these security things so they blurred the line here with the premium uh um yeah, those business uh yeah continuity and, uh, uh, protection things are, are are appearing in normal 365 licenses now so Security is a big part of 365. Obviously, what I'm talking about here is moving entire businesses into the cloud, and security needs to be paramount. The one thing you've, you've got on your side, obviously, out of the box, is Microsoft uh, are a much bigger company than you are. And I can say that quite comfortably because Microsoft are one of the biggest companies in the world. So their stuff is secure. Their platform is, is spread all across the world, and they've got some of the best engineers in the world working on it. So if something goes wrong, they're going to fix it much, much quicker than you could your own server or a, a local IT company could fix your own server. So you, you've kind of got that fallback. They do have outages. It's not unknown, but so do uh, businesses with power cuts and internet outages. Those outages are, are very short, very swift, and dealt with very, very quickly. The security side of things, so these products here, let's talk about the security of 365. So what I showed you earlier, 2FA, MFA, it's called multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication. For people that don't know what that is, it's a really simple explanation. If you don't have it on and I guess your password, I can get in your account and wreak havoc. Not that I want to, but someone else could, uh, someone could target you, they could send emails to people from you, uh, they could rob bank details, they could do all sorts of things. If you have 2FA or MFA turned on, I could guess your password, but then it asks me to type a code in, or it asks for you to press yes on a, on a secondary device. And that secondary device or that code is usually your mobile phone, so unless I have that on my person, I've been thwarted. I can't get in. If you suddenly get an app, yeah, a pop-up on your phone saying someone, yeah, there's a 2FA code, and you know it wasn't you, you can change your password as an extra security measure, but you know without that 2FA, they're not getting in. We recommend it for all users. Uh, we have it on for all users, and all global admins in Office 365 have it turned on as standard. It's something that you can't turn off anymore. It's something you should be doing, and it's not just for 365. Go and do it for other stuff. Have a look on our website. We've got a really good article written about MFA and why you should use it. Advanced threat protection. Um, is something you can add to normal licenses that don't have it included um, or 
when we start looking at the premium licenses and the enterprise level, it comes with it built in. So advanced threat protection is it's going to start monitoring and checking your emails. It's making sure that yeah, it, it's, it's dialing the spam protection up, up to 11. It's making sure that um, the email that you get from a guy in your company, yeah, let's say his name is Dave Saunders, if you get another email from someone called Dave Saunders, it's going to flag it as a, it, yeah, it, it could be a, a, a spoof yeah, a, um, attempt. And it's going to start looking at those and start looking uh, at, at attachments in your emails and using built-in antivirus uh, from Windows Defender to check that those attachments don't have viruses and things. Advanced Threat Protection does, does a lot more than that. Um, it's, it's a very good product and it's, it's well worth looking at. Data leak prevention and information protection kind of go hand in hand. So a, a quick description of how that works. With data leak prevention, there are policies that you can turn on that will look within 365 and monitor what your guys are doing. And if someone was to uh, write down a, a card number, so as in a bank card number, it would delete that bank card number, it would give a pop-up on the screen to say you're not allowed to share bank card numbers, and it would look within emails, Word documents, um, any files that you're working on that are Microsoft files. Uh, but that pop-up would come up and it would also send a, a message to whoever your data protection officer or whoever you've nominated to receive that message to say that so-and-so has been yeah, writing down card numbers. And that works with things like any personal identifier information, so um, uh, national insurance numbers, uh, back, yeah, more, uh, more detailed bank details and things. Information protection is kind of the, the next level of that. You can turn on that certain people in your company are allowed to share things with external users. You saw some of it earlier, so when I share links with people, do they have permission to better download those files? Do they have permission to better edit them? Um, do I want to better encrypt my emails end to end? So if I'm sending an email to a 365 user, it's automatically encrypted because it doesn't leave the 365 platform. But if I send an email to someone that's not on 365, instead of them getting the email, they get a link that they can click to go and see the email, uh, which uses 2FA because then they get another email when they try to log in with a code, and they can then go and look at that email, and it stays in 365's platform uh, and keeps it secure. So that, that's how I, a little bit of how encrypted email works. Policies and security permissions. Well, we have policies about what devices are allowed to connect to Office 365 or, or Microsoft 365. Security permissions, people are only allowed to access what they're supposed to be able to access. That's where Teams works really well. Uh, instead of yeah, Teams, you only ever access what you're allowed to access because it's all you can see. Uh, with SharePoint, you might try and access a folder that you don't have permission to. That's what secu yeah, security permissions are. Remote de device wipes. So anybody that's got a Microsoft 365 account attached to their phone, um, automatically when you add that to your phone there is a, 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 a it warns you and says you're adding your, your yeah your device to a, a company email <clears throat> what that means is if that device goes missing uh, or um, uh, uh, an employee leaves your yeah leaves your tenure you can um, you can wipe the emails from that device you can wipe um, the OneDrive from that device and that's what that is Authorized devices, you can only allow certain devices yeah, to log in. And reports, there's some really, really detailed reports in there when it comes to 365 security. So things like um, uh, 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 if, uh, data disclosures, if you want to find out uh, who's been emailing who, uh, you, you can go right back in time, what people are doing when they've logged on. And, and you can, again, those reports you can dial right up to be as detailed as you want. So like we were saying about 2FA and MFA earlier, that is an official statistic. It's not plucked from thin air. You are nearly 100% like, yeah, less likely to be compromised using 2FA. It just makes it, it makes your account so much more secure. And I can't emphasize how important that is. And like I say, don't just do it for your 365 accounts. Do it everywhere. I've got my, my Facebook account is done, my Twitter, uh, anything and everything. If, if, I, if there's an option to turn 2FA, turn it off. Talking about policies and security, I've got two examples I want to show you just so that you can understand them in the real world. Teams, as great as it is, out of the box, anyone in your company can create a team. And all the stuff I've shown you earlier, when you create a Microsoft team, it creates a shared mailbox with a calendar and contacts. It adds people to that shared mailbox with calendar and contacts by creating an Office 365 group. It creates a SharePoint site. It creates a shared OneNote document. And it gives anybody within that team the ability to share company files with external users. Which is, out of the box, I think a kind of a bad step by Microsoft. Um, they do let 
admins know, um, but unless you're an admin that regularly follows the yeah the, the blogs and, and guides that Microsoft give out, you wouldn't know. As a safety preventive, when we found this out, all of our SetSat clients, we've actually created policies now that nobody can create a team unless the company asks us and says that they can be an assigned teams creator or a private channel creator. Also out of the box, we have external sharing turned off unless, again, they request otherwise. That all has to be done manually, but we do it for all of our customers and anyone that we bring on. Um, it's a, a probably a very good practice to do purely just on the, 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 the data fragmentation side of things. Teams is very clever, but um, if I had a Teams for, uh, for, for accounts and someone else tried to make a team for accounts because they weren't a member of it, Teams isn't clever enough to, to say to that person, well, you already have an accounts team. It will just go ahead and do it. And when we talk about fragmentation, then you might have people in a team that you don't know are in a team, all working together with their own files in there, uh, and another team doing exactly the same thing. And it, it just becomes a, a nightmare to try and manage and look after that. Um, yeah, to, to, to all the housekeeping and stuff that's involved. So if that's something you guys do use, speak to your IT provider or speak to your admin and find out yeah, how to get that locked down and just try and prevent that from becoming a nightmare before it does. When we were talking earlier as well about policies, anyone can connect their mobile phone to Office 365 emails. Unless, again, you dial it down and turn that off and change the policies. So we've got some customers where they've got a policy in place that if someone tries to access their 365 account on their mobile phone, they get a pop-up on their phone saying, your device is quarantined, uh, please go and speak to so-and-so. So-and-so also gets a message to say that Dave has tried to connect to, yeah, to, to 365 mails and they have to authorize it. So they have to manually release it and say that that's fine. What's really good on there as well is it then gives you a list of everybody and the devices that are there yeah, that are being used so again you can manage as people come in out become yeah come in and out of the company who has access although you go yeah when, when people leave you're going to have a, a leaving process in place that you close down their account and change their passwords and things you want to make sure that um yeah if, if something nasty happens uh, or a complicated scenario where they're necessarily not leaving the company but they're yeah, they're under investigation and you need to protect your assets you can wipe your assets from those devices so it's yeah, a really good policy to look at. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about today is as great as the platform is and as awesome and, and, and as big as the platform is, there's so many people on there that obviously Microsoft can only offer so much retention for data. So Microsoft actively advised that all customers are responsible for protecting their own data and there's lots of different ways of doing that out there. Some people synchronize stuff to local machines. Um, which means you need a machine running on site, which kind of defeats the object of, of what you're doing. There's some cloud-based stuff out there as well. But we launched the product earlier uh, this year, which we're very proud of. And the two things just to compare really is Microsoft, if you delete an item from Exchange, it will go into deleted items for 30 days. Once it falls out of there, it goes into recoverable items for 14 days. Once it's gone from there, it's gone forever. There is no way to bring it back. Again, with OneDrive and SharePoint, what I showed you earlier, those recycle bins only hold those files for 93 days. Once those 93 days have gone, it's gone. The service that we offer is a cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup, so it's not a, a data farm that we, we're, we're hosting somewhere, or it, it's actually a cloud-based product that, 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 yeah, that lives, so yeah, the cloud are servers-based all, all around the world. Um, it hooks directly up to 365 and therefore is very quick and seamless. We back up Exchange every four hours and we back up OneDrive and SharePoint every six hours. So that's six times a day and four times a day. But what that does is it gives us a point in time. And that point in time means that we could actually recover, unlike just your deleted items in, in Exchange, we can recover to an exact, um, yeah, an, an exact day. So if someone phoned us and said, I know I had this folder in my inbox three weeks ago we can fire up their inbox from three weeks ago and just recover that folder, which you'd never be able to do from just deleted items because you can't do that point in time. Again, with OneDrive and SharePoint, we can do exactly the same. Uh, this file or this folder, I need to recover this. But likewise, we can recover a whole mailbox if we needed to as well. Um, and yeah, we hold the Exchange for seven years and OneDrive and SharePoint for a year. Uh, it's a really good product. We're really proud of it. Um, so yeah, a, a little bit of a sales pitch there. If it's something you're interested in, get in contact with us. Um, it's, it's a very, very reasonable price and it's something we don't just offer to our customers, we can offer it to anyone. 
So, yeah, in a nutshell, that is 365. All the bells and whistles. Um, I think you'll agree it's, it's, it's an impressive product. Uh, hopefully some of you have learnt some extra things and pieces there and it'll give you some things to go and play with. Uh, but that, that is the end of my presentation and I'm now open for questions. <laughs>